The uh, staff at the food bank are experts at stretching every dollar, and the pandemic has, of course, made that a priority. Aaron visited the Food Bank of Iowa for a look this week at how fast prices are rising at the grocery store and how the food bank is helping our families overcome this increase. Right now, hundreds of thousands of Iowans are dealing with hunger every single day. We're on a mission to make a difference, and you can help us by helping the Food Bank of Iowa. People like to believe that food insecurity isn't in their neighborhood, but we know that food insecurity exists in every county across Iowa, some counties as high as 15%. Food insecurity is a big problem in rural Iowa. People tend to think of it as a city or a metro problem, that it's a problem because of homelessness. It's not just homelessness. We feed those people as well. We feed people that are homeless, but the majority of the people we are helping have a roof over their head, a high school education, and they're cobbling together two or three part-time jobs, and they're just not making ends meet. Another thing that's having a big impact on the work that goes on here is the skyrocketing cost of food. People don't realize, many of us, you and I go to the grocery store, we might not check our bill. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, when I was out of college, a single mom, when I was a single mom raising two kids, I took a calculator to the grocery store. Many of the people we serve today are still going to the grocery store with a calculator. They have to because they're tight on their food budget. Food increased 3.5% last year, and normal average year-to-year -year food price increases is about 2%. 3.5% was the largest increase we've seen in our history on food prices, and there's no end in sight. When these um, go out into the community, they will be accompanied by other products that aren't shelf stable. Yeah, these are the dry goods. Along with this, generally, we're sending out a carton of eggs. The, the Iowa egg producers, have all come together to donate enough eggs that every family that visits the pantry will get a dozen eggs a month at least. Also, we have USDA milk that we'll distribute. And generally, there's a frozen protein product. It might be ground beef, venison, fish, or, or turkey, hind, turkey hindquarters, chicken. One of the things you mentioned is the partnerships with the entities that produce food, and so we have a lot of it sitting right here. This is an example. It is an example. Would you like to grab yeah. a bag to look at, Erin? So this is from Barilla, Barilla Spaghetti. This is Barilla Spaghetti. They donate to us. Barilla is, they've been a great partner for a number of years. They donate a lot to us. They have very exacting quality control standards. So if it's off just a bit as to what a box might weigh, We'll get entire boxes of Barilla, which you see behind us already packaged. Or if it doesn't meet cooking quality standards, they'll give it to us in bulk. So this we received in bulk. Volunteers have come to package it in family size packages because for the most part, that's who we serve. And then volunteers also affix a label to it because we have to meet federal labeling guidelines for everything that goes out our door. We're grateful for partners like Barilla. Pasta goes a long mm -hmm. way on the dinner table. And then we use donor dollars to purchase pasta sauce to go with it. And it's something picky kids will eat. <laughs> it is something everyone yeah. will eat. So now you know a lot more about the need and we are making it so easy for you to make a difference. Just go to our website, who13.com.